Now, um, I could do a little audience analysis and see who remembers what, what, uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Who can tell me which movie this is? Uh -huh. The graduate. Very good. Okay. And then what advice did this guy get or give to Dustin Hoffman? <laughs> Plastics. You got it. Okay. So somebody has been reading their New England Journal of Medicine. All right. And how did that get into my talk? One word. Plastics. So hopefully you saw this. Uh, um, it's one of the most important dietary things that's been published uh, in my career of looking at uh, uh, at animal versus vegetable, and that is microplastics. Uh, as of last month, there was some hint before, but a, a huge trial that I'm going to go through with you uh, really outlined that plastics is a major issue for cardiovascular disease. You can see that date on there. It was just uh, a month ago. And I'm um, hopefully that everybody uh, takes a look at it. Just if you put in your search engine, you'll see uh, the lay press, but you'll also see the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, they talk about plastic pollution. <clears throat> so the fish are, are, are taking in all of the plastics and, uh, and it's actually... Um, both microplastics and nanoplastics, that's your American Medical Association, talking about what happens when you eat the fish who ate the plastics. And it's heart attack, stroke, and death. Um, there actually was data from that I was able to find on this topic three, uh, two years ago that looked at uh, all kinds of um, oxidative stress, uh, which is a, chemical changes in the body that... Um, uh, that actually are related to microplastics. And the one thing that predicts how well plastics can kill our cells is their shape. That is uh, irregular shape, sharp pieces of plastic kill cells a little better. That actually just makes sense. So what happened last month was the New England Journal of Medicine talked about microplastics and nanoplastics. What micro means, you know, like a, a millionth of a, of a measurement and, um, uh, a nano would be a billionth. Uh, so these are really small pieces of plastic uh, and atheroma is plaque. Um, most of you have heard of someone who had a stent or bypass trying to remove or, or bypass atheroma. This one is the carotid artery. They took people who were about to have, uh, they had enough plaque in their arteries. Typically they had had a stroke or had some transient ischemic attack or you know, had enough symptoms to warrant trying to get that plaque out of there. If you have more than an 80% narrowing, it needs to come out because your stroke risk is so high. So those surgical procedures were being planned and they got uh, a bunch of people to agree to be part of this study. So uh, what they basically did was enroll people who agreed uh, before they actually were were having the uh, uh, the procedure Unfortunately, some of them actually didn't make it because uh, these are high-risk people getting that need to get that carotid plaque out of there. And it turns out that there were 150 people who had uh, micro and nanoplastic uh, evidence in their, uh, when they took the, um, the plaque out and sent it to the pathology lab. 107 didn't have any evidence. And this is what it looked like. Polyvial chloride and polyethylene the scanning electron microscopes uh, shows uh, irregular pieces of plastic, irregular shapes. Um, this one kind of looks like Pac-Man ready to eat some cells. Bottom line is that this is uh, uh, dangerous stuff, and they characterize it very well. The inflammatory markers that the previous article had talked about were seen exactly. Uh, these interleukin-2, interleukin-6, um, uh, uh, TNF-alpha, these are all markers of um, uh, that show in, in increased inflammation and, and correlate with, uh, with the cell death. And these levels were much higher in the people who had the plastics. They actually looked at the uh, cellular infiltrates as well. And they were able to see beyond doubt 
that there was more damaging cells going on uh, inside the plaque of people who had the plastic. Okay, so this is the one you probably want to remember. You may not have seen too many so-called Kaplan-Meier plots, but just imagine you start off with, you know, your 107 and your 150, and you're following them, um, the people without plastic in the plaque uh, in blue, uh, the gold are the people who did have plastic. And every time somebody has a stroke or a heart attack or death, you tick it up. And over time, uh, over months, you see events happen. Events happen. is a high-risk po population. But the curves start to separate at about a year. And by two years, they're way apart. By three years, they're far, far apart. Bottom line is that having plastic in your plaque pr promotes or, or uh, predicts future events, probably by promoting it.